Hi Taurus, this is Teresa from Tara by T. Welcome to January and Happy New Year. And before I get started with your reading, I want to call in some good energy, create some sacred space. And I want to say thank you for liking and subscribing to my channel. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for leaving comments. I read all of them. And also thank you for um, those who have ordered readings. I've enjoyed working with all of you. So we're starting a new year with eclipse. It's eclipse season this month. We have a new moon eclipse in Capricorn and a full moon eclipse, and that's on January 5th, and a full moon eclipse on the 20th, 21st, and that's in Leo. So um, let's see what the cards have to say for Taurus for the month of January. What is coming up for the month of January? For Taurus. What is 2019 going to bring? For Taurus for January. What does Taurus need to know about love, relationships, career? What is important for January? Five of Swords, the Seven of Pentacles, the Eight of Pentacles, the Page of Wands, the Nine of Pentacles, the Nine of Swords, the Queen of Swords, the Ace of Swords, the King of Wands, and the Justice card. Okay, so you start the month. The Five of Swords, you may feel like you've been, you're existing in a toxic environment or you've been feeling victimized in some way. Maybe there's someone in your life that um, has been, has not been treating you fairly. You may be dealing with someone's jealousy or hostility or just been someone's just been difficult and so you're wondering what to do about it you have the the seven of pentacles you know you've planted some seeds and you're thinking well you know what do i do do i continue along this path do i continue with this relationship or do i cut my losses and move on because with the five of swords um there are certain aspects to the situation that cannot be changed. You know, you're dealing with someone who they are who they are, and they're not going to be, you know, sometimes we say, well, if I, if I try to work with them, and if I try to talk to them, you know, maybe things will be different. That's not the Five of Swords. The Five of Swords is you have to accept this situation or this person um, with its limitations. And if you can't deal with those limitations, then you have to move on. So whether it's a relationship, it could be a relationship where, you know, you've tried to get through to this person. They keep draw, trying to draw you into drama. They keep um, acting hostile. You're dealing with someone's anger. You feel like they're working uh, against you in some way. You can't fix it. Whatever the situation is, you can't fix the person. It could also be an environment, a career situation, where you're feeling like you're working in this toxic work environment. <laughs> you know, and it, that's just the way it is. Like, this is the environment. If you don't like it, you have to leave. It's something that can't be fixed. So you're going to be spending January thinking about, where do I need to plant my seeds? What do I need to do? Do I need to cut my losses and move on? Do I need to... Um, try somewhere else, plant my seeds in more fertile ground, you know, and that could be in a relationship. If you're not happy in a relationship, stop giving it energy. It's not going to change. If you're not happy in a career situation, stop waiting for things to change. You have to make changes. You have to take action. So, and here you already started taking action because you have the eight of pentacles here. So you might be, um, 
in your own little quiet way, trying to learn all you can and work towards a goal. Because this is a career goal. This is the apprentice card. So you may be learning new skills at work. Or you might be planning um, to take some classes so that you can improve your situation. And ultimately, you have the Nine of Pentacles here in the future. That you want more independence. You want more control over your life. You're tired of being victimized. So you might be thinking of either starting your own business or working for a company that gives you more autonomy. Um, the Page of Wands. Now, this is a card of good news or favorable messages. So whatever you've been working on, and I think you're doing okay career-wise, you're getting good uh, feedback. You know, like people are happy with the work that you're doing. So, um, I don't know what this Five of Swords has to do. There may be just be someone at work that is just being difficult. You know, I think that for the most part, people like the work that you're doing and they're happy with you. But some of you may be dealing with someone at work that's just been difficult and you feel like you're always being victimized by this person. They're just... And... Um, that's not going to change. But you are coming to the end of this cycle because you're at the nines. You have these nines here. Uh, and then here's the ace, ace of swords. At some point, you're going to take action. You're going to start to, I mean, right now, with the nine of pentacles, you might be existing in a situation that is comfortable and financially secure for now. And so you're thinking, well, you know... I've got my paycheck and, you know, <laughs> so I, maybe I could put up with this a little longer. Um, but you might have been, actually, you might even be working, putting so much energy into career, you're neglecting your relationships. Because the Nine of Pentacles is someone who's enjoying all these material um, things, but they're all by themselves, they're alone. So it's not enough to just have a high, a good paying job or to be surrounded by material things. You want to share your life with someone. Um, and you might be worried about someone. There's the Nine of Swords here. So someone in your life might be giving you some grief. You might be worried about someone's health. Or you might be worried about um, your situation. Like maybe you're thinking about starting something new but you're imagining all these possible things that could go wrong and you're worrying about the future and you're not sure that you know what's going to happen in the future you're I, it's almost like there's a potential for a relationship because i see this king of wands and the page of wands so you've had some communication with this person and it could be a fire sign and it could be that you're worried about this person's health or you're worried about what's going on with this person because either they're they're under a lot of mental stress. Someone's under a lot of mental stress. It could be you or your partner or the person you're thinking of. Um, and you're just not sure where what the future is going to hold. You have the Queen of Swords here. This is in your negative thinking sector. So you have been pretty much isolating yourself from family and friends. Um, because you've been through a lot and you've been working really hard and you're, you kind of built up walls around you. Even though you're looking to the future and you're trying to um, make life better for yourself, it, you have lost your sense of fun in some way. Like the Queen of Swords um, energy is very harsh and judgmental and aloof. So maybe you need to drop your guard and be more approachable. Maybe you need to reach out to people. Someone's wanting to reach out and communicate with you, but you're like, you're afraid to get involved or you're worried about the future. You're not sure um, if this has potential or not. But you have the Ace of Wands of Swords here. So there is someone who's going to take action. There is going to be some action taken with the ace. 
this is a new someone is changing the way they're thinking about you and your relationship and once they realize they may realize that you're important to them they're going to start to take action the king of wands this is someone who's thinking of the past and maybe feeling guilty about the past oh that's um, I feel like there's someone who wants to connect with you from the past. And maybe this Nine of Swords energy is because he's looking at... So you're worried about someone in your life. But this person's... This person has a lot of guilt about something. Maybe they, they betrayed you in some way at, at one point. And they, uh, there was never any closure. And they're wanting to come back and um, be forgiven because justice card is here so the justice card is an outcome if there's some kind of legal situation it could be a legal situation that has a favorable outcome so if you're in the middle of a divorce let's say if you're breaking up with someone or you're ending a relationship um, justice will be done there'll be a favorable outcome or a fair outcome the other way it could play out is justice is a card of karma. So whoever has hurt you or dealt with or you know betrayed you in the past, there there will be karma involved. The justice will be done. So it could be that this person is getting back what they gave out. And um, they're having they're waking up and they're realizing what they've done and they're feeling very guilty about it. And um, they may want to approach you. Justice can also mean that you could be dealing with a a Libra. It's either, a, so you might be dealing with a fire sign and a, like an Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, and also, or a Libra, because you have this the air sign here, the Queen of Swords. And so you have fire and air. But whatever's going to happen, there will be justice. You're, you're, the victimization is not going to continue. At some point, you are going to move out of this situation. And you are going to be moving toward a better, um, a fair outcome. You, you might just decide to cut your losses and move on. You might decide, you know, I can't do this relationship anymore. I've, I've given too much and I'm not getting anything back. And I want more for myself. I want to get, I want more of an equal relationship. You know, justice is about both parties, you know, give and take. Maybe the relationship was one-sided and you were doing all the giving. Um... So it could be that you wind up leaving a relationship behind and embracing a new relationship that's going to be offering you more. It could also mean a career move where you decide to move into a situation where you have more uh, power, more autonomy, maybe a leadership role because the King of Wands is also a good leader. You have a lot of knowledge and you have a lot to share and maybe you're Skills have not been utilized properly, but something is going to be coming up that can um, utilize your skills and put you in a, in a better position. So there could be someone that offers you something in January in a career situation that will make up for all the injustice that you have suffered in the past. I feel like the table, the things, the table is turning. And you've paid your dues, you've put up with a lot of um, unfairness, injustice, you've been victimized. Well, that's changing. And now um, justice will be done. So let's see with um, the new moon. The new moon's falling in your ninth house. And it's sextiling, sextile, but Neptune is sextiling the new moon. Or it's sextiling Neptune in the eleventh house. So you have the potential... Ninth house is higher education. It's teaching, learning, long distance travel, global uh, connections, you know, dealing with a, um, 
areas outside of your immediate environment. So there's going to be some major changes. I think that if you're thinking about taking, learning some new skills, that could be really helpful in changing your current situation. So education, you might be focused in January on upgrading your skills. And that's going to help you achieve a dream or a goal that you've wanted to achieve. The 11th house is the house of dreams, friendships. Um, you can achieve something now through higher education, through um, spirituality, through long distance travel or global connections. So you might be have, developing a website that has global reach, um, doing, creating a marketing plan, whatever it is, it can bring you fulfillment of a dream. You also have Venus going through your seventh house and it's squaring Mars in the twelfth. So there could be some romantic attraction coming up as well. Venus is helping your relationships and your all partnerships, not just romantic ones, not just marriage, but business partnerships as well. So there could be some type of business partnership that you form as that you might be forming. Um, you've got Mars and Uranus in the in the twelfth house. So I feel that there's going to be some surprises. There could be someone, um, you might be dealing with someone who's in like institutions, hospitals, prisons. Someone might be um, hospitalized or something. You might have to go visit, you know, maybe an older relative. If that's not the case, then you are dealing with freeing yourself from psychological blockages. Maybe you've had, you know, anger issues that you never wanted to deal with. Or whatever it is, you're going to be breaking free. You're going to be finishing up old karma, releasing yourself from karma, from this feeling of being victimized so that you can start again. You're going to have a new way of thinking. Uh, the full moon is going to be in Leo. And that's kind of running across your fourth house and your tenth house. And that's T squared by Uranus in your 12th house. So yeah, this is going to be psychological. You're going to be dealing with psychological issues this month. Um, the good thing is, the break. Uh, you're going to have some kind of breakthrough, like a psychological awareness or breakthrough where you're releasing old karma. Uh, you're releasing, you're being released from psychological blocks, hidden enemies, uh, anyone who's become a burden to you. You know, maybe you're taking care of someone and um, you're spending a lot of energy and it's one-sided. You're going to be released from all that. And that's going to affect so that you can have a new start in, in your home and in your career and your life path. So, uh, because Uranus is going to be moving into Taurus. And when Uranus moves into Taurus, it's in Aries now, the very tail end of Aries, but when it moves into Taurus, be prepared for change. The way you see yourself, the way you interact with the world, you are, you're going to be free to be you. You're going to be freed to, you're going to feel more alive. And there are going to be a lot of changes that will bring a breath of fresh air to your life. Um, but I think part of that is going to be dealing with you know, finishing up old karma and old blockages that you have been holding on to for too long and for too many years. So you can, like if you're feeling guilty about something or if you're feeling mentally stressed about something, you have the opportunity to be freed from that, to release the past and start over and have a brand, a, let some fresh air into your life. Uh, because there's been, it could be a relationship that has been holding you back, that has been maybe affecting your self-esteem in some way. So once you release that relationship and release that old pain and that old hurt, you're going to be free to allow new love to come into your life. That will be a lot better. That will be more of an equal partnership, not so much one-sided, 
where you're being you're sacrificing everything for one person and you're not getting anything back in return that's coming to an end and the justice card is saying now your next relationship is going to be more of a give and take more equal and so you could be moving from an air a fire sign to an air sign um, but even if that you know without the um, astrology involved like the signs the person that you're mo you're moving from someone who had too much of an ego who was very selfish and at times maybe even abusive and you're going to be moving towards someone who is a lot more has more of a, a fair outlook who wants to share doesn't is not who's more giving and um It'll be like a karmic reward for everything that you've been through in the past. So look forward to change. Look forward to releasing yourself from anything that's not working. Don't try to change it. Don't try to change a person. You know, if you're being, if you're in a situation where you're not being respected and you're not being valued, um, just cut your losses because better things are waiting for you in the new year. But you have to first release the old before you can manifest the new. So, um, and go after that dream career path or job. Um, if, you're, if your current career is not working either, I mean, this works in relationships or career. Um, don't be afraid to make changes. Don't, don't hold on, because Taurus tends to hold on to things way past their shelf life. Um, don't torture yourself. It's like ripping a Band-Aid off slowly, you know? Just if something needs to go, just make a clean break and free yourself up to embrace a situation where you are valued, where you're getting what you deserve because you deserve a lot, Taurus. So that's my forecast for January. That's my, I hope you've enjoyed this reading and I wish you many, much abundance and love and much success in the coming year. And I will talk to you again next month. Okay, bye now.